Hi everyone, this is Cindy from Impulse Creatives. Welcome back to our series, Close Encounters on Twitch. Um, I am so, so, so excited today. I am standing in one of Taiwan's most premier performing arts center, the National Theater and Concert Hall. I have the privilege of bringing several of my artists to come perform at this amazing, amazing venue. And I am so fortunate that they have decided to open up their doors to us to give a tour of their space. And today with us we have Ming Han. Ming Han. Thank you, Ming Han, who's going to give us a tour mostly about the beautiful structure. And we'll learn a little bit more about the structure and the architectural of these two gorgeous buildings because um, the Performing Arts uh, Center is made up of the National Theater and the Concert Hall, which actually uh, sits in two separate buildings. And we'll get to see both. So we're really, really lucky today. And we'll get to also have a little sneak peek of the theaters on, um, and the concert halls in both buildings. So let's get started. Ming Han, introduce yourself. <laughs> OK, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Ming Han. I'm a volunteer tour guide um, here at the National Theater and Concert Hall. Um, so if you don't have any questions, let's get started. Yeah, let's do that. Come OK, on. yeah, sure. So maybe if we look outside, um, you could see some students. These are probably the first thing that right. everybody kind of notices. And you can see them jumping around, singing but you do not hear anything at all. Right. And that's because we actually do um, put a lot of effort in our sound um, insulation. So oh, each of these glass okay. doors are actually able to black out at least 30 decibels of noise. Oh, wow. So that's why you're not hearing anything yeah. at all. And also, of course, the sounds could also be transmitted through, um, through the tiles. Okay. So we also uh, make sure that the tiles, we, we created a so-called floating floor system to make sure wow. that the tiles and the floors are actually decoupled so that the vibrations will not be transmitted inside the um, inside the auditorium. That's unbelievable. Yeah, that's so really amazing. See, right, so you can see them jumping up and down, performing, practicing, yeah. and you do not hear anything at all. That's un amazing. That's really, really amazing. I didn't really realize that. Like, I just always, you know, like I said, I come here all the time for performances, and then I also have had the privilege of been invited for my artists to come here and perform, yet I never notice it. You know, we were talking earlier that when you go on tour with your artists, it's always the stage, the backstage, <laughs> and then you forget to, you don't have the time to really take in the beauty of this gorgeous building yeah. um, and to really understand the structure of it. So thank you for explaining that. I mean, is are they able to just dance outside like that? They do they have to these students have to um, well, apply for like permits to use the space because mm -hmm. I see it all the time. It's exactly. like here and downstairs and on the square. Exactly. Um, no, you do not need a permit to um, to practice outside. Okay. So basically, anyone could just come here and then do their thing, okay. um, except like in the evenings when okay. we actually have performance. Oh, okay. We okay. would ask them not to um, like perform directly in front of our entrances, ah. but otherwise that space is free and, and also open to everyone. Great, great. Thank you. So yeah. where are we going to go next? Let's go into the um, auditorium. Perfect. It's actually Perfect. open for you guys. Thank you. I'm so excited. Yeah. This is really, it's, um, it, it's, it's incredibly beautiful. Right. So we talked about um, those glass doors outside. Yeah. These um, are also specially constructed um, soundproof doors. Okay. They are also able to block a further 40 decibels of noise. Wow. So, so like when we're talking now, yeah. this is about 60 decibels. Oh. So you can imagine that if you still if you talk outside, uh -huh. people inside might still hear you. Okay. But of course, during a performance, people are absolutely quiet outside. Right. So that's how we are able to keep noise levels to an absolute minimum. Okay. 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 Wow. So let's go inside um, our auditorium. So as you can see... <laughs> this is gorgeous, guys. Right. You're in for a special treat. This is definitely uh, one of the highlights um, on this tour. Um, yes. So we have about... Um, actually, we have 1,498 seats here in the auditorium. Right. Um, including 11 uh, seats for wheelchair users. So this is where we're standing right exactly. now. Exactly. So okay. this is um, where 
uh, the wheelchair users will be sitting okay. um, in the auditorium. And also there are actually two rows that are hidden underneath the, the apron of the stage. You okay. can't really see that right now, but that's actually the front. Um, you see the front part of the um, stage? That's actually the orchestra pit. Okay. Now it's been basically um, elevated. Elevated. Exactly. Okay. So it's Okay. But when we actually have a live band, it could also be used as an orchestra pit. Okay. Right. Okay. And then this picture that you can see right now yeah. on the stage, this is actually our firewall. So um, oh. it's a piece of metal, exactly. That's not really the curtain. It's just right behind the curtain. That's our firewall. Okay. So um, basically, in case of a fire, yeah. the firewall will be then uh, lowered. Okay. Um, and then also there is a pipe, uh, a water pipe system uh, attached to it. Okay. So when the firewall is coming down, um, the, the water will be um, drenching the, mm -hmm. um, the piece of metal to, preventing, uh, to prevent it from buckling when it's coming down. Oh, wow. Right. That's awesome. Well, I have to say the, the technicality of the space is you know, working with the theater, and I just remember all the precautions that's taken, you know, when one of my production was being set up in the concert hall. I remember when they were working on the lighting. This is the first time I've been to a theater where all the, um, all the staff members have to wear a safety helmet. Right. And I was like, that's so awesome, right. <laughs> because nowhere else will they ask you to wear a safety helmet. And I think all the it makes such a huge difference. It's the details, and I and I, like I said, you know, um, I've brought several artists to perform at these two beautiful spaces, and your production team is really at the highest caliber. And, oh wow! And, and they take such good care of the artists, and the artists have such an amazing experience every time they come, and you know, and, and perform here. So. Um, so you could tell, I mean, it's all the little details that makes the experiences so unique. Right, I'm really happy to hear yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's of course more to, um, to um, safety here. Yeah. And look at our seats. This is what we call a uh, continental seating arrangement. Oh, okay. So you can see um, there are actually no central aisles. To yeah, yeah, holes. yeah. Um, this is different from the uh, national um, Hall. Okay. Uh, we unfortunately won't be able to go into the um, concert okay. hall, the auditorium today. Okay. Um, but at least we can see the uh, auditorium yeah. here at the National Theater. Right. And also, what's special about these seats is that they're not only ergon um, ergonomical. Exactly. They're not only um, ergonomical. They're also very practical. Okay. So what happens is we have this very specially designed um, sound absorbing panels. Oh wow. So what absorbs about the same amount of sound energy as okay. when there is a person sitting on it. So oh, okay. that to, the reason we do that was because we want to make sure that um, the reverberation time stays constant wow. inside the auditorium, whether okay. it's a full house okay. or, um, or when there are no one in the auditorium doing a rehearsal. Okay. So um, I don't know if, have, if you have heard about the reverberation time. No, I have so, not. Um, Even I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay, let, let me give you, give you an example. Oh. So you see, when I clap my hands, yeah. you could kind of hear a lingering sound right. that kind of dissipates yeah. and decays. Yes. So from the time you hear that sound until it's complete decay, it's about 1.4 seconds here in the auditorium. Whoa. And this is the time we refer to as the reverberation time. Okay. What this does is that um, it kind of gives your sound a, a friendly aura. Okay. It, it's kind of like a friendly aura that surrounds each note. To give wow. it a more lively, more, um, more, yeah, I guess friendly sound, you yes. could call that. Yeah. And we need that because um, Usually, well, here um, in the auditorium, especially in the theater, we want to make sure that the speeches are clear. Yeah. But we don't want them to be completely choppy or dry. Okay. That's why by adding a little bit re um, reverberation yes. time, we'll be able to create a more friendly and a more and of a depth and warmth. 
exactly. Got yeah. it. Got but it. But of got course, it. if you got too much of that, yeah. then the speech will become too metal and yeah. slurred. Yeah. 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 So reverberation time is especially important for music. Yes. Um, so that's why we also have a different reverb time. I was going to ask you in exactly. the concert hall, right? Exactly. Yes. So yeah. the reverb time there is 1.7 to 2.1 seconds. Um, but here it's 1.4 seconds. Oh my god, this is so interesting. See, there's a lot of engineering that goes into building a performing arts space. You know, there's a lot of science that goes into it. So it's not just what looks pretty, but it's also creating the, the specifics so that the enjoyment from the sound to the, you know, from the acoustics to the visuals to the whole feel of it is just perfect. And yeah, and then this is why, you know, everyone comes and they, they the performers have a, a great time. The audience is, 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 a, is a beautiful and amazing space acoustically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also one last thing that I want to show you yeah. um, is this metal piece uh -huh. um, that connects the floor to okay. the seats. Okay. This is actually our air vent. Oh, so okay. In the basement, we have a giant, a gigantic um, room to okay. process our air. So the air would come through um, uh, the, the openings on the roof okay. and then go directly to the basement okay. and then get processed and filtered yes. there. Yes. And then the air, the fresh and cold air would then come out from um, these honeycomb-like metal structures. Wow. And this is how we're able to keep the temperature inside at a constant 22 degrees. Oh, okay. And it's completely noise noiseless. So I know, you know I've noticed. Right. Sometimes they, they could get really noisy. Okay. But our system is basically completely noiseless. Okay. So who who's the company or that came and de decide like designed all of this? Right. So the um the basically the sound system and also the whole um technical uh, system I think was yeah. actually designed by a Dutch and German company. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, I don't have the name. It's okay. Right yeah. Now. But yeah. that was um, basically we took that into consideration in right. um, '87, or or basically when we started building the, the two cons uh, two buildings. Okay. okay. Right. So um, it was uh, back then. I'm sure it's one of the well, the state of the art design yeah. at the time. But it's still, in a way, still state of the art to be able to think about all of this. You at know, that time. Back yeah. in 1987. That's like almost you know like more than 30 years ago exactly you know exactly. And, and i think that's that's real that's really um what we call advanced engineering and yeah. technology right. to think about all of the details like this right right so you said it was um was so i actually don't know this but when were the two buildings originally built so um we started construction in 82 okay um, um for the Concert hall. Okay, uh, okay. The concert hall was actually fin uh, completed first, and then the National Theater. So both um, buildings or both constructions were in, um, inaugurated in '87. Got it. Yeah, that was actually also the same year that martial law got lifted in Taiwan. Oh, so that was a wow. Very, very special year for Taiwan. Wow. Okay, that's really special. Yeah. That's yeah. really, really special. And what was. Um, who designed it? Who was the architecture for the two buildings? Right, so uh, the designer or the architect that designed um, both the National Theater and Council Hall, his name is Yang Zhuochen, Mr. Yang. Okay. Um, he was also a very famous architect um, okay. in Taiwan. So when we decided to build uh, the, the National Theater and Council Hall, we received 43 designs, not just from Taiwan, but from okay. all over the world. Okay. Um, and only five of them were shortlisted. Ah, so um, okay. the work from Mr. Yang was right. one of them. Right. And he was actually the only person that incorporated this um, Chinese palace design yeah. um, into, um, into his submission. Okay. And that's probably also the reason why um, he got chosen. chosen. So we slightly modified his, um, his design okay. and then he got approved okay. and he became the person that was basically responsible for for this whole project. Right. So did he also design how it look inside as well, or only the outside? That's a really good question. I think um, acoustically, right. um, basically how the acoustics works and all the sound design were um, 
basically responsible were, were the responsibility of this Dutch and um, German company that Got I was it. talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, from aesthetics, um, he probably had something to do yeah. with it too, okay. but I have to look into it. Yeah. I'm not 100% sure. Can we look at the chandelier oh, yeah. up there? I think it's just absolutely, it is gorgeous. completely gorgeous. Right. Right. And what's also special about it is that it could also be basically lowered to the ground level oh, for really? maintenance. Exactly. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. that's smart. Yeah, There's actually course. a really cool video of that, oh. um, of the chandelier being lowered down uh -huh. to the ground level. Uh, which I hope maybe you can find on the on Yeah, the we'll, we'll look it up. We'll look it up. Yeah, or I can send it to you. Yes, right? please. That video. <laughs> oh my God, please do send. Please right. do send. Right. Please do send. Sure. So this building only has this main auditorium, right? It doesn't have another... There is actually another small experimental theater. Okay, okay. Um, it's a, a basically a very basic, basic black box. Black um, box, okay. Um, theater. It's located on the third level, on the third of, level. The, of the building, yes. Okay. Will we be able to take we, a sneak peek? Unfortunately, or no. not this time. Okay, this time, okay. Yeah, next but, time um, we can always... You should definitely come back yeah, and visit no, no, us. No, yes. We will show you the Absolutely. experimental theater. Absolutely, absolutely. Excellent. Well, let's take it away. Where shall we go next? Yeah. Okay, so right now we're actually standing right in front of um, another one of our art um, piece collections. Okay. This is called In Time. And it's actually composed of two different pictures. So oh, depending okay. on where you where stand, where you're standing, exactly, you will actually be seeing different um, things. So okay. let's stand. Um, this is where we call. Oh, the best, best shooting, shooting spot. spot! I love exactly. this. <laughs> so now you could see basically the National Theater. Um, there's the Taipei oh, 101. Oh, okay, okay. Right? And there are some ab Aborigine um, totems. Okay. Uh, some Chinese opera characters. Wow. Oh, and then the dancers. I see the dancers on the top. Exactly. And if you read Chinese characters, you could actually see the Chinese characters for 30. I don't know if you could actually spot that. See that three strokes and then the cross here. That's kind of cut off. Oh, so okay. <laughs> so what does it say? Um, so, well, the 30 actually does have a significance. So this piece was created um, Oh, during... it says 三十. Exactly, 三十. Ah, so it's, okay, so, when, so this whole thing is inside a Chinese character of 3 and 10. Exactly. The numerical 3 and 10. Okay. Exactly, and the reason behind that was because this was created during um, the 30th anniversary Got it. for Got the it. National Theater. Got it. So what we did was, um, these are actually the old um, stage boards that we took um, during the renovation. Okay. So um, for the 30th anniversary, right. the whole theater kind of went through a very extensive. I remember um, that. Exactly, I remember that. I remember uh, that. Renovation. So they decided to um, replace the the old um, floor um, stage boards. Oh wow! But it was also to such a pity because they're so beautiful to exactly. actually throw them away. These are um, made from um, woods um, from the state of Oregon in the U.S. Wow. Okay. So these um, well these um, kind of wood they have very long and and flexible vibrations. Okay. And apparently, if you drive a nail inside okay. the, the wood and then pull them out, yeah, um, the the opening would actually heal themselves. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's what I heard. Okay. I've actually, I've actually I have to ask it. my Oregonian friends right. <laughs> back in Oregon. <laughs> right. So anyway, we decided that it would be a shame to actually throw these um, floorboards away. Right. So we um, had a lot of artists um, and carpenters yes. um, that repurposed all these um, yeah. floorboards into like, pieces of furniture. Which you, which you could see in our um, cafes and bookstores. Oh, really? And also in the library, too. Ah, so okay. So make sure you okay. uh, check them out. I will afterwards. definitely go check it out. And I have to now pay close attention in the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's go to the other side of the, um, the, 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 the artwork. And then so and you can see the other, exactly. Wow. So we're going to stay in a different spot, too. Right. Also the best uh, shooting the best spot. Shoot. Oh, right. See, this is stuff you don't really notice when you just come <laughs> into work. Oh, I see Charlie Chaplin now. Yeah, that's usually the first person people notice. Yeah. Uh, there's a ballet dancer, right. a break uh, dance a break dancer. dancer. So this is the contemporary side. Exactly. And then you can it's also, the, again, see, see the 3-0 the, now. The 3 zero yeah. exactly yeah. there. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> cool. Yeah. 
So how this artist created this um, this um, piece of work? He actually used a projector to okay. project the the image that he wanted okay. um, on onto the um, floorboards, and then he kind of just carved out the the pieces that he doesn't need right. uh, to create um, this this carving this piece of work. So it was uh, pretty clever. Very it was clever. also a very popular work here at the yeah. theater. So who was the who was the artist that created this? Uh, the the creator is called Ash Chen. Ash Chen. Uh, okay. He actually has his name hidden in, oh, I in see the picture it. as well. Yeah, so right here. Ash. Yeah, and, right here. And then on the other side, you could see it, you could find his Chinese his name Chinese as name. well. Exactly. Oh, very nice, very nice. So how long did it take for this? this oh, entire panel. That's a really good question. I have okay. to look that up. I have no worries, no, idea no worries. How I'm sorry I'm asking it. you all these <laughs> weird no, these questions. These are excellent questions. Yeah. I'll have to get back to you later. No, please do, please do. This is so interesting. It's really, it's very representative for sure. And yeah. I love the fact that they refurbished what already was here exactly. at the theater, which makes it even much more um, Meaningful. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, these are all like so historical. Very historical. And if you think of all the artists that have actually danced on, on these these Oh um, my god. Board. Yeah. Unbelievable. I think, you know, this is one of the premier again, I, I have to say it's a premier performing arts center in in Taiwan and probably the oldest, you know, in the performing arts. And so everyone from the Bolshoi Ballet to Yo Yo Ma to you know, to, to Long Long, to Lincoln Center, to the Berlin Philharmonic, anyone you can think of has around the world, the largest, you know, performing arts companies and artists have graced these stages. So, um, so they really do know what they're doing, you yes. know? Yeah. yeah, excellent. So which way should we go now? Okay, now let's go to our main lobby. Which is also gorgeous. Right. <laughs> See our Liberty uh, Square Arch. Yes. Oh, window. yes. Was it purposely selected that it would be built on Liberty Square, it, or was this so? Okay. So was Liberty Square here first, and then these came, or was it all simultaneous? Okay. Well, uh, we we could um, do a little bit history of, of yes. the National Theater and Concert Hall. Right. So um, this um, piece of land, well, we will actually go to the Liberty uh, Square later. Great. Um, but this entire stretch of land was actually um, a military base. Oh, it was. Exactly. So during the Japanese occupation, it right. was used as barracks um, for the Japanese army. Got it. And then after the Second World War, um, it became the uh, the military police headquarters. Quarters and oh. also the army headquarters. Um, and then in the 70s, um, the government moved these um, barracks or these uh, military bases yeah. out. And orig the original plan was actually to convert into a um, commercial district. Okay. Um, but when um, our firm, former president, um, yeah. John, pa passed away in 75, uh -huh. um, his son, he was also the premier at the time, mm -hmm. decided to build a memorial park. Um, in his dedication. Got it. So that's when they kind of decided to kind of, they envisioned that a park with yeah. a memorial hall and then a um, theater as well as a concert hall wow. um, to, well, in his memory. Yes. So an organizing committee was uh, set up okay. and that's how basically this place came to place. So okay. at that time, um, that that square was not called the Liberty Square. Oh, it wasn't. Okay. No, it wasn't. At that time, I think they actually th this whole place was known as the Chiang Kai Shek Memorial Park. Ah. Um, okay. But then, of course, you know, um, in '87, the martial law was lifted. Lifted, right? And then um, that plaza, that um, that um, square, became a really popular gathering place yes. for students. You know, sometimes for demonstrations or just gatherings for mm -hmm. art and performances. Yes. So I think it was in 2007. I might have to look it up. Okay. I think that's when um, the president then um, then decided to um, call it the Liberty Square. Oh, okay. So it was only very recent then. It was I pretty recent. I thought exactly. it was always called Liberty Square. <laughs> right, right. Okay. No, originally um, it was just known as the Chiang Kai-shek Memorial Park. Okay. Okay. Um, it wasn't until 2007 that. Okay. 
we um call, we started to call it um, Liberty Square. Got it. Got it. Got right. it. Excellent. Well, I love these um, stairways. Yeah. You know, it kind of reminds me of like old and European time where, you know, there's a beautiful like grand ball and all the ladies and the gentlemen would be coming down and walking right into a big ball. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's very yeah. elegant. It's, it's so the, elegant. Yeah. Exactly. It's one of the most um, popular hangouts too for <laughs> our um, concert goers. Yeah. And common evenings for, for, for performances. Right. Have people try to rent the space to take like wedding photos? Um, you, I know that you can actually rent this space now for, for special, um, I don't know, um, like um, book launches okay. or special events. Okay. Um, I don't know how often they get rented out, okay. um, but I know that you could actually rent this place. Oh, very so nice. Make sure that you talk to uh, the people, to our people, yes. to find out if you want to have uh, a birthday party or something. There you go. Or if you want to just have nice wedding photos, it's a gorgeous space. Exactly. Yeah, excellent. So which way shall we head out now? Okay, let's um, go towards the sixth gate. Okay. And then um, we'll go to uh, the Liberty Square. Perfect. Perfect. We'll be able, be able to actually look at both constructions from afar. Okay. And get a really good picture of what the theater and the concert hall look like. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Well, this is also something interesting, actually. Oh. If you kind of wanted to know uh, some of the artists, um, some of the performers that have oh, okay. visited um, our theater or concert hall, oh, wow. you could actually find 66 uh, of them. 66 of them, okay. Well, yeah. I see I see Pina Bausch. Exactly. There's, there's Pina, Pina Bausch. Bausch. There's then, Merce Cunningham. Exactly. That's so awesome. Oh, uh, you know, I actually work with Thomas Megliaranza. That's amazing. He's one of the artists that I used to work with. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what else. I can't even read a lot of them. A lot of them, right? Them. Let's see. Uh, I can't recognize their, their handwriting. But this is why they're called this is artists. This difficult, exactly. <laughs> uh, Carol. Carol. And actually don't even know that many people. Wow. So who do we have in Chinese? Some of these Right, ones. so Li Guoxiu as Li an Guo example. Oh, is yeah. really popular. Yes, um, Li Guoxiu. And of course we have Li Li Qin. Ah, uh, yes. So uh, Lin Huai Ming is also yes. the director of our uh, cloud gate. Yes, so Lin Huai Ming is the um, the founder and creator of the Cloudgate Dance Company, which is one of the most premier uh, contemporary dance company in Taiwan. Right. Um, and he just recently retired. Yeah. Uh, and who is this one? This is... Uh, something, D Dominic. Dominic Avec. Oh my God, <laughs> sorry. Some, I think my really bad friend tells me that it says, Dominic, Dominic with pleasure and emotion. Ah, Dominic. Oh, nice. <laughs> you, I don't know French, so you, you have it above me. This is uh, like, you know, high school French. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is great. And then we have Li Li Chun. Li Li Chun is a, is a, a really um, established, very well-renowned actor in Taiwan. And he's also from television to movies exactly. to theater he does a lot of theater right very very well respected and we have one of robert wilson also a stage director our oh, famous wow. robert wilson okay and of course that's his signature you right. know right he's like the I, I think of him as like the you know albert einstein of stage directing he's wow. really really very far out there and so unique and so special in his creations. Wow, that's yeah. so awesome. Why should uh -huh. you really become our tour guide? I don't know, <laughs> no. any of these people. Well, I work in the arts and I, you know, and that's what I know, but I don't know what's going on with all of these other stuff. So this is really interesting. Okay. Yeah, and like I said, this is, you know, they, the so many greats around the world have graced their stages and this is proof. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Excellent. Okay, so that's, um, the National Theater, and now we're gonna go through uh, our Liberty Square. Okay. Um, and then we'll kind of look at both constructions. Yes. In the middle of the square, and then we'll go inside the um, the concert hall. Concert hall. Yes. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.
So um, one of the easiest way, I mean, if we actually look at the theater and the concert hall, right. can you tell the difference? Do you see how they're different from one another? Actually, I can't really tell because it took me a long time. Every time I come, to know I, which is I, which. Yeah, you maybe you have a secret that I have totally not noticed because every time I come, I always can't figure out which one is the theater and which one is the it's concert, concert hall. hall. So if we um, face the um, memorial hall, okay. the one on the right is basically um, the national theater. Okay. And then the one on the left would be our concert hall. Got and it. also another way to tell the difference is actually by looking at um, their roofs. Oh, okay. Exactly. So um, the roofs for the national theater yes. is what we call the hip roof the um, National Theatre now and as I said um, it has four um, sloping uh, right. four slopes. this is what we call a hip roof okay. and they're only used for um, imperial palaces okay okay um, and then if you look at the um, concert hall this is right. what we call the resting hill um, roof. resting so, hill exactly okay. so it only has two slopes ah right one facing us okay and one one facing on um, the singing row okay. and they, on either side there are just two basically um, vertical um, gables okay. so instead of four roofs um, Inside, you will also see that the structure, the layout is also actually uh, symmetrical. So it's pretty much the same layout inside. Oh, okay. okay. So like the best way uh, to tell them apart is really by um, their rooftops and yes. also by their location. Okay. Right. And another thing that I want to talk about is actually um, what we call the Dogon system. Okay. Um, these are also very typical of um, ancient Chinese buildings. Okay. What they are, they're and 
and um, heavy winds or, okay. or even earthquakes. Uh -huh. This is also another really cool thing about um, these um, Chinese um, buildings. Right. That's really like ancient time engineering, right? Exactly. If you think about it. <laughs> yeah, ancient wisdom. Yeah, it is ancient wisdom. That's right. amazing. That's cool. Great. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Why don't we um, go um, into the National Concert Hall? Now? Okay. And in here, I know that there is two halls. There's the main hall, and then there is a recital hall. Exactly. Downstairs. Exactly. So yes. the recital hall is in the basement. Yes. It sits about 300 people, right. and are usually used for solo recitals. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then if we have a, like a, a symphony orchestra, right, um, or you know a really big band, then they are yeah, usually they used... perform. They usually use the the um, the official auditorium. Right. So you said today we won't be able to... Unfortunately, yeah, uh. we won't be able to go into the um, auditorium. Okay, um, is it we... because there's a rehearsal going on or...? That's a really good question. I think it's because there is a rehearsal going on today. Jing Jing, is that, is that the reason? So it's because we have a rehearsal today. So it's a rehearsal, got it, okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, concerts and performances. Right. Uh, yes, we have been we have been really lucky. You have been very lucky, and and once we go in, I wanted to talk a little bit more about this right. because um, you're in a very unique position right now. Harry Potter 电影交响乐，不要英文那个。Something Harry Potter. Exactly. <laughs> Also, some maintenance going on. So yeah, no, that's this great. This is interesting. Yeah, because you this don't usually good. see that. Yeah, no, like they don't look like that every day. No, not at all. Can yeah, we peek? Like we can. Um, um, Oh, oh, okay. So before we do that, maybe we can um, look at the green wall. Green, yeah, sure. Green wall. Again, we get to uh, take a closer look at these um, chandeliers. I know. Look at these gorgeous chandeliers. Yeah, they're also really popular with uh, with the with our audiences. We basically imported the the crystal prisms from this. Um, Austrian company, wow. Swarovski, and oh. I don't even know how many of them are there, but all these are crystal um, prisms. So they're Swarovs Swarovski crystals. Exactly. Oh wow, okay. Yeah. That's amazing. Right. So can you explain what this green wall is? Right, so um, these um, walls, these green walls, were basically installed in um, 1980s, no, I'm sorry, not 87, in 2007. Okay. Also during our 20th um, anniversary of right. um, the National Theatre and Concert Hall. Okay. It was created by a French botanist. His name is um, Patrick um, Blanc. Okay. Um, he's a, a, I think, very popular um, botanist in French. And he basically kind of patented this um, green wall, or he called them um, vertical gardens. Okay. So, um, so basically, the construction um, of a green wall is like this. So underneath is like a st uh, um, stainless steel um, metal frame. Okay. Basically, that's about four to five centimeters thick. Okay. And on top of that, that's basically the 
the, the, the frame that holds the whole structure. Okay. And on top of that is a waterproof PVC. Oh, okay. And then he put uh, a, some kind of a um, hydroculture felt wow. um, with little pockets. Okay. So um, the whole installation actually uh, is without soil. They basically just insert these plants into these tiny little pockets. Uh, and there's also a network of pipes okay. that basically distributes um, nutrients, um, nutrient solutions um, that kind of trickle down from top to the to bottom. bottom. Exactly. Okay. So the plants would take um, all the nutrients they mm -hmm. need and the excess water would then come down and then be collected at the bottom, at the gutter at the bottom. Okay. And then they would then get injected, uh, re-injected into the pipe system. Oh, so the water is then being recycled. Exactly, it's a closed circuit. Mm. And so it's a very clever system. Smart. And also you have all these lights um, over like on the ceiling to provide um, artificial, um, artificial sunlight. Artificial sunlight, Exactly, yes. for, for their photosynthesis. Right. Um, so these are, um, they are called green symphonies. Yes. There are two of them. Yeah. And also because they were so popular yeah. that we invited um, Patrick Blanc, um, Blanc back yeah. to Taipei. Um, so he created another two of these um, green walls for right. us um, at the National Theater. Yeah, we saw that. So there we were saw also that. two of them. They're two called them. Um, the uh, Orchid Walls. Orchid Walls. Exactly. Okay. And these two here are called Green Symphonies. Well, this kind of design is starting to get super popular. They have around been really the world. popular, exactly. Around the world. But you guys, I think, you know, one thing to point out is Taiwan, when it comes to recycling and environment and reusable, they're really one of the leading, you guys are, I mean, Taiwan is really one of the leading countries. And for you guys to think about this, even from, you know, 20 years ago, that's, you know, that's already, you could, it, it shows, it shows that you guys are thinking really far in advance and, and thinking very much ahead. This must be really hard to maintain though, right? I wonder how often they, <laughs> they, they have actually to come. Done. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> there was um, actually one guy just there. Yeah. No, um, he's gone. Um, I think at least every three to four months, we kind of do um, insert and then, you know, exactly. And then okay. sometimes change the plants as okay, well. Okay, I was going to ask. So the plant is not always there like that. Like they do some rotation of the plants. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Based on the seasons. Okay. And also how well they do. Right, right. Wow. This is great. Mm -hmm. This is great. Injecting some nature inside a building. Exactly. <laughs> and they're so appropriately termed as well. Yeah. Green Symphony. Green Symphony. I really like that name. Yeah. Excellent. So uh, where are we now? Right. So right now we're standing um, in front of this beautiful um, calligraphy. Okay. Um, from um, a very uh, renowned uh, calligrapher in Taiwan. Okay. Her name is Dong Yangzi. Dong Yangzi. Right. Okay. So um, in 2003, she created this work um, together with another um, architect in Taiwan. Okay. Um, and then there were back then I think eight pieces um, of. Um, calligraphy okay um, they're basically huge so I think it's about eight meters long okay and four meters tall okay so when she created uh, this piece of work she actually was standing in, uh, right on the piece of paper oh. holding a ink blush um, brush as big as she was so it was like a life-size ink brush exactly wow. and she was like dancing on that piece of um, paper to create this um, this um, calligraphy exactly so they actually consist of, consist of um, eight characters. Um, I think 99% of the people in Taiwan won't be able to tell yeah. you what, what they are. Is, what are they? Uh, but I can tell you what they mean. Okay, so, so they, how, what is it in Chinese? Exactly. They are... Um, she, 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 wait. Actually, I don't even know what they <laughs> are in Chinese. <laughs> wait, somebody's gonna come to the rescue. <laughs> I know, someone's gonna come. What is it? She's gonna give us the correct pronunciation. Yeah. So, she, xian xi, he xi, uh -huh. xue xi. Thank you. <laughs> wow. So, um, so these um, eight characters roughly translate to so laid back, so okay. refined, uh, so dignified, okay. and um, so upright. Ah. So these um, eight words were actually used to describe an old duke um, in a Chinese, um, in an old Chinese canon Got called it. the Book of Poems. Oh, okay. And then uh, Ms. Yang also thinks that these um, four or these eight characters are actually very appropriate description 
out of the national um, concert hall as well. Okay, okay. And so that's why um, she put um, these eight characters um, uh, into this work. Very nice. Very, yeah. very nice. That's right. very, I mean, I guess you're right, because not a lot of people, even if you're Chinese, you know, speaking, you won't even know what it says. I could, I couldn't, I can't even make out any of it. <laughs> right, right. I don't feel so silly anymore no, no, <laughs> to no, know no. that even the, the Chinese speaking Chinese no. speaking people don't realize don't recognize the characters. Yeah, I think ninety nine, <laughs> like I said, ninety nine percent of the people won't be able to tell you exactly what they are. Right. Yeah, right. but they are just simply to look at. Even if you don't understand, even if you can't see what they are or what characters they are. Right. No, it's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Well, like we were, the staff was saying, um, unfortunately, there is a rehearsal going on tonight. It's uh, Harry Potter live with Symphony. Is it with NSO? Which, yeah. The so, Taiwanese, uh, is that the which, Taiwanese which, Symphony Orchestra? Okay. Anyway, so there's a performance going on with um, the Harry Potter film live with orchestra with Symphony. And I really want to highlight this again is that... Um, our performing arts industry and the entertainment and live performance industry has been so, so, so devastated around the world as a result of the pandemic. Um, and being here now in Taiwan for two months, I feel so lucky and blessed to have been able to enjoy performances from recitals to opera to you know orchestral performances to musical theater and to full capacity you know there and and tickets and performances are being sold out um and i feel so blessed to be able to have this opportunity to come to taiwan and to be able to sit in a theater shoulder to shoulder next to strangers to enjoy a performance and I think, you know, the National Theater and Concert Hall has done such an amazing job, too, of taking precaution to make sure that all the audiences are safe um, so that we can be together and to experience, you know, a live performance that other people around the world have not been able to. So I really wanted to, to really point that out. And, you know, and the fact that you guys are giving guided tours um, which is really great and you're doing such a fantastic job um, Thank you. and I want this opportunity to also show people outside of Taiwan because people can't really come into Taiwan and so I want them to have an opportunity to see how gorgeous this this building is um, you know I had the privilege of working with them and bringing my artist here but you know there's a lot more people who want to know about the National Theater and Concert Hall, and and thank you, you're, you're you're doing such an amazing job. And I encourage for people who, in the future, once the borders are open, when you come to Taiwan, please come and sign up for a guided tour. And they have English audio tour as well, so make sure to sign up for that. Yeah. Thank you so much too no, for thank bringing you. all these artists, you know, to Taiwan and introduce them to the audience here. No, it's our pleasure. It's it's my pleasure, and I I serve my artist. I serve my artist, and I I'm, I'm a, you know, we're servants in the performing arts industry. So so I want to share, and I think that's the whole purpose of this tour. And thank you for doing such an amazing job and explanation. Um, even I don't have the, op you know, even I don't know all the facts that you share with us today because as I said, you know, we generally just come in, um, rehearse, we tech, we load in, we load out, and then that's it. And then we which all go home. also very important. Yes, right? which is very important. And, and that part I know from working with the team here is that they're, they do such an impeccable, impeccable job to make the experiences so smooth for the artists that come here. So thank you, I really appreciate it. No, we thank, thank you. Thank you, no, 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 <laughs> thank you. So do we have more around this side? Or right, why that? don't we take the stairs, these gorgeous yes, elegant stairs? Yes, I know, I'm gonna um, feel so elegant. And then we will be looking at um, the very first um, uh, fresco mural here in Taiwan. Oh, okay, okay. And that will be basically the end of our uh, guided tour today. Okay, great. I feel like I should be wearing a ball gown, you know, like walking down these 
magnificent, majestic staircase. <laughs> yes. Make sure you come back next time, and then we will have the staircase yes. ready for you. There you go. <laughs> I'll have my ball gown ready. <laughs> Oh, okay. And then right in front of us is yeah. basically um, the very first mural, uh, uh, fresco mural painting here in Taiwan. Oh, in all of Taiwan? In all of Taiwan, exactly. So this um, piece of work was also created um, in 1987. Got it. When um, the National Theater and Const uh, Concert Hall opened its door. Okay. Um, the creator of this uh, painting was, um, is called um, Chen Jingrong. Chen Jingrong, right, is that professor a professor Chen. Exactly, he's a, a, a male professor, male professor. Okay. Uh, here in Taiwan. And he created this piece basically with his students. Oh, um, okay. Exactly. If you look at this uh, female um, musician here, yes. with the instrument, with the gong. Yeah. Um, so in Chinese, it, uh, we have a saying in Chinese, which goes something like, um, a gong starts, um, a good show starts with the sounding of a gong. Yes. So basically, hao xi kai luo. Ah, yes. Is yes. Uh, exactly, that's the meaning behind um, this, uh, this uh, female musician. And she kind of also sets uh, the mood for the whole painting. Got so um, I think um, back then when they created this painting, they actually have, um, they actually have live um, um, models basically standing with all these instruments. Oh, so that, okay. Um, the students and also Professor Chen uh, were able to um, paint them. And then if you look at all these uh, music, all these Chinese uh, yeah, musical Chinese instruments, instruments, they're also basically arranged in a way that they form, they kind of form a zigzag pattern. Oh, kind okay. Kind of just like notes on, on staff lines. Wow, that is very thoughtful. That's very well thought out. So um, if you're lucky, you could even see him. Sometimes um, Professor uh, Chen also comes to the uh, concert hall to kind of do some rework and oh, retouching. He does. It, exactly, he oh. does. He still comes once in a while. That's, that's so sweet. Yeah, it's very, that's so, very sweet. That's so, so, so sweet. Yeah. So these, these are then based on real life like people who basically modeled for him. Exactly, so because he wanted to make sure that he got all the hand positions and Correct. finger positions right. Yes. So he had all these um, female students um, from, from a music college, I think, to basically oh. play the actual instruments, instruments so that he would, he would be able to actually depict them and then put them, them down on the, on the paper. Yeah, do you know all the instruments? Do you know what Ooh, they all are? This is another question <laughs> that I won't be able to, to answer. answer. <laughs> exactly, but, but I will look them up. Thank and I can you. send them to you afterwards. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. This is this is it's beautiful. I can't believe this is the first mural in Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So apparently they were supposed to last like hundreds of years. Okay. Um, at least in Europe. Right. But because in Taiwan we have so many earthquakes, um, that's why sometimes um, you could see tiny little cracks on them. Oh, and okay. that's also the reason why Professor Chen he comes, comes back. once in a while to kind of do some retouch Retouching, work. Exactly. Yes, that's so important. Right. And it's it's I mean, it's amazing that the original artist is still doing the retouching himself. Right. Right. right? <laughs> and he still has exhibitions um, all over Taiwan okay. too as well. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Well, this was such an informative afternoon. Really, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. And I want to say another big thank you and gratitude to the National Theater and Concert Hall team for opening their doors to us and to the audiences today. Um, if you, once, once everyone's safe and the borders are open and if you have a chance to come to Taiwan, please, please, please do come visit the National Theatre Concert Hall. Even if you don't have a chance to see a performance, come visit the space, come enjoy the architect. Um, and in the meantime, stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, and we will see you next time. Take care, bye! Thank, Thank you, you so much for being with us today. Thank come you. Come back. Thank you so much, bye. Bye.